Imagine an alternate reality where Eric Buell had been given the job of Harley-Davidson chief engineer in the early 80s instead of leaving and starting his own company. In that timeline, this is what the Lowrider S would look like today. Like the spawn of a threesome between an FXR, Softail and a Dyna. It's not often you see a motorcycle and just have that visceral reaction, a feeling that the builder, Roland Sands in this case, got it right. But that was the experience I had when I watched the Buell Motorcycle Company introduce this amazing 175 horsepower supercruiser. According to them, this thing weighs 450 pounds. Not sure if that's a dry or wet weight, but either beats most of the sport cruisers out there. So has the Buell Motorcycle Company built the perfect cruiser? Yes, yes it has. For more details, stay tuned. And if you want to spread the word about this wild bike, please share this video with friends. After liking it and subscribing to the channel, of course. First, a quick and abbreviated history of Buell. Eric Buell is a former motorcycle racer and talented engineer who joined Harley-Davidson in 1979 and worked on the V4 Nova project that never saw the light of day and the FXR which ended up being one of the best handling Harleys of all time. Buell then left to start his own race and sport bike company and was responsible for some serious innovations in chassis design. He maintained a relationship with Harley-Davidson and eventually sold his company to Harley, staying on as chief engineer. Buell motorcycles were truly innovative, using twin spar aluminum frames to house fuel, hollow swing arms to house oil and underslung exhaust to centralize weight. While Buells had a reputation for great handling, they used the air-cooled 1200cc Sportster Evo motor, an engine that lagged behind other sport-oriented motorcycles in peak power and was not well suited for sporting applications. And of course, in 2008, just as Buell finally got his 146 horsepower 1125cc liquid-cooled Rotax superbike engine, the financial crisis hit and Harley closed the Buell division. End of story, right? Wrong. Eric Buell continued building competitive American superbikes under the name EBR, Eric Buell Racing, until the company went bankrupt. It's hard to start a motorcycle manufacturer from scratch. However, the company was restarted without Eric Buell this time. He's working on a new electric startup called Fuel, but using a lot of his designs and a full line of bikes that include a sport bike, a naked, an underwhelming adventure bike, even this wild desert racer. And, of course, the newly announced Roland Sands designed Super Cruiser, which to me is the model that has the most potential for ensuring the survival of this new company. This new bike blew my mind, so let's examine the details. In designing the Super Cruiser, Roland Sands tried to incorporate as many parts from existing Buells as possible and meld them into his own frame that pays homage to the FXR. Buell's 175 horsepower liquid-cooled superbike V-twin is not an engine you think would look good in a cruiser, but somehow it does. There's no hiding that radiator, so why not accentuate it with a bold industrial design? Despite being liquid-cooled, the engine still manages to look spare in the frame. Speaking of the frame, it looks wild, with a signature FXR triangle coupled with a highly visible monoshock under the seat. Fully adjustable upside-down forks hint at serious suspension, and Buell's unique perimeter brakes add a flair of originality. 17-inch wheels will be able to make use of sporting rubber, yet somehow still manage to look proportional with the rest of the bike. The motorcycle sits high, implying generous lean angles. None of that scraping your butt on the pavement business that most cruiser makers feel like they have to pursue. Form follows function here. The spare look of the bike also exposes a very cool looking swing arm and we're not messing with belt drive, a chain tells us that this is a performance motorcycle. This is further backed up by the mid controls which are way more mid than most cruisers, reminiscent of the Ducati Diablo which is more of a naked motorcycle. Unlike the mock-up of the Buell Super Touring 1190, the styling on the Super Cruiser looks good, combining elements of the FXR and Dyna look with a clean soft tail rear end and the West Coast style fairing fits perfectly with the aesthetic of the bike. There is no fat on this motorcycle, no chrome or extra covers to hide the internals, nothing decorative that does not need to be there. This is the essence of a 60s chopper or cafe racer. Every superfluous part is removed for the lightest possible lean and mean bike. Thank you Buell. So why is this the most interesting Buell motorcycle? Simply because it is the most unique. 
Other brands make spectacular sport, naked and ADV bikes as well as dual sports and enduros. Dual sport and naked bikes are decent but not groundbreaking. Their adventure bike left a lot to be desired, but no one has put out a cruiser like this. Yes, there is the Sportster S, Ducati X Diablo and Triumph Rocket 3, but while those bikes may have performance competitive with the Super Cruiser, none of them look the part. They're trying to look unique and innovative, but none have hit that sweet spot of mixing tradition with modern design. Sorry, but the X Diavo looks like a potato with wheels, the Rocket 3 is a rolling aircraft carrier, and the Sportster S, while actually not terrible looking, you may disagree, does not really have much of a link to the past. If you were to view these bikes without badges in 1982 and pick the Harley of the future, the Super Cruiser would be the resounding choice. It is the spiritual descendant of the FXR and looks by far the most American of the three. Are the pegs a bit too far back? Sure, but nothing some highway pegs won't fix. And when you hit the twisties, you'll be glad they are where they are. So price, release date, full specs? $20,000 plus, 2025, and we don't have the full specs yet. You can put down your deposit on Buell's site right now and hopefully take delivery in 2025. These will be shipped directly to the consumer and I have a feeling that even at $20,000 USD, more orders will come in for this one than any other model. Why? Americans love cruisers and this bike is what the Sportster S, Nightster, Lowrider S and Fat Bob should have been. Among those bikes, it looks like an MMA fighter among professional wrestlers. Lean and mean and ready to beat them up in a real fight. Yes, it's pricey, but it's going to be legit fast, light, and it won't look like a plastic spaceship. I'm only a fan of overpriced bikes if they deliver the goods, and if the Super Cruiser puts down the numbers Buell claims, there will be lots of buyers lining up for a 175 horsepower FXR. Of course, ordering a bike direct is a gamble, as it deprives consumers of the dealership experience. Buell is contacting its former dealer network and attempting to reopen those showrooms, but as you can imagine, this won't be easy now that they've been closed for years. If you buy one of these, you'll have to find a good independent mechanic. One thing that was conspicuously absent was any mention of electronics. That doesn't mean there won't be any. The iPad display, the only part of this bike that stands out like a sore thumb, hints at some technology, but if it doesn't have rider modes and traction control, new riders need not apply. The Dynabros are drooling already. Can you imagine riding this thing with no electronic nanny? Personally, I'd rather spend my money on motor and suspension than electronics, but not everyone shares that preference. So, can you tell I like it? Dang, thanks to Buell for having the balls to build the sport cruiser everyone wants. Hey, maybe Harley could hire Roland Sands to build a bike like this around the Rev Max 1250, though they'd probably insist on dressing it up and charging 30,000. Like I said, instead of the Sportster S, Harley could have built this bike. In a way, it's better that it's a Buell because it's a legit American brand with a connection to the original FXR, but without the baggage of the Harley name. No one will be complaining that it doesn't sound like a Harley, because it's not a Harley. What we have seen of Buell since its resurrection is mixed so far. Their sport and naked bikes are basically unchanged from the original 2008 designs. The super touring adventure bike intro was very disappointing with a bike that looked like it was designed by Homer Simpson. And their 180 horsepower dirt bike desert racer is absolutely ridiculous. Only riders with a death wish will be ordering those. But the Super Cruiser is balls. It looks like the perfect sport cruiser to me. Light, powerful, modern suspension, it looks fantastic. I hope Buell can get off the ground and deliver these by 2025. This bike should be the company's best seller. It's good to see that there are still manufacturers with a true passion for building amazing motorcycles rather than bloated boat anchors. Hooray for that! What do you think of this ridiculously cool bike? Putting down a deposit, do you trust Buell to get it to market? Let me know in the comments below and ride safe!